Bob, you're chasing a record tying sixth Kentucky Derby. How do you feel about your chances? You know what? Um, if you would have asked me this back in March, April, I was uh, looking really uh, pretty, pretty strong. But uh, you know, the whole picture's changed. But I, I still think I have a couple good horses in there. I think, um, I think authentic. You know, I still think that he's uh, he's doing better. He's improved in a thousand words the way he ran last time. He's on the improve. They still need to improve more to catch up with uh, Tizalaw, who is definitely the horse to beat. And uh, but you know it's September and they're starting to mature, so it's a different type of derby. Now, Authentic worked a mile in racehorse time, one thirty-eight and three. Has he encouraged you with regards to getting the mile and a quarter distance? Well, I think a lot. What happened? I think a lot of people watching the Haskell. Now the Haskell. Mind you, it's a lot deeper, that track is a lot deeper this year. They're not running as fast as they are. And Mike, uh, I asked Mike Smith about it. He says, you know, when he, he would turn, he said, I, I, when I cut with him, he just took off and left that gray horse, and he was just handwriting the man. And I told him, you need to stay after him, because he will look around, and you've seen in his other races. And so I think he was just going to cruise in, and then, that, and then he sort of let up. So did he let up? Did he run out of steam? Uh, Jimmy said when he came back, he wasn't tired. He wasn't like exhausted. So I'm just hoping it was a track and he was letting up. So uh, only Mike Smith would know that. And, um, but I think, he, I think he'll get it, but you know, he has to get the right kind of pace scenario, like all these horses. So, but he's quick, <clears throat> but um, you know, there's a lot of quick horses in the race. So, um, you know, is it is it stretching? A lot of them, it's going to be stretching. I mean, uh, tis the law. He went. He handled a mile and a quarter, okay. And so, you know, a lot of horses that aren't bred for it to get the mile and a quarter if they're if they're that good. And so, and I'm, I, I and I think authentic is is uh, he's pretty solid. And the way he he can be working any better right now. Uh, the way he's going right now. So, I've been happy his last two works. I think the San Anita Derby. I did a. I, I didn't. I wasn't. Did, didn't do a super job of prepping him for that. I stopped on him, you know, and went in there. I thought I was. I could. He was good enough to win, and he had a horrible trip. Everything went wrong, and he got beat by a nice horse. And I think John uh, Sheriff's horse. He's matured a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of these horses now. It's not like in May, you know. They, they're gangly and all that. So, I, I think. I think the California horses are threats. I think Tis the Law right now is the man amongst boys. And so are we, can we catch up with him? You know, it's, it's September now, and I think that's a big question. Thousand Words won the shared belief, as you mentioned, at a mile and a 16th. He has a tendency in the morning to get a little bit keen in his works. What has been the, the biggest challenge with him and looking forward to going into the Kentucky Derby? He's, he can be a little bit of a quirky kind of horse. Um, I think uh, he's, he can be keen, but going to mile and a quarter, you know, it, I think that's, that will help him. It'll be in his, uh, to his benefit because he's sort of steady kind of horse. And once you get him in a nice uh, groove, I think uh, the mile and a quarter should fit him well. I mean, I've always thought of him as a horse that's going to run a mile and a quarter. Um, and he's slowly improving. And his problem, he's had a problem with crowds. Well, he's not going to have that problem, <laughs> you know. So he's and, and authentic the same thing. But so uh, I, I, I still think uh, there's some hope for him, you know, because he's improving and he did beat uh, Honor AP. Now Honor AP wasn't, you know, all cranked up for that, but still he beat him, and so you can't take that away from him. And he's has won some stakes, but in the middle there he went sour on me, but he's back and he's. And his mind is right, so uh, that's so. I, you still got to, you know, he's a threat. No crowds at Churchill Downs, as you mentioned. It's still the Derby, though, right? Yeah, it's still the Derby. I mean, it's going to be weird. It's, uh, but I, I think um, there's no atmosphere. There won't be any atmosphere. It's going to be like racing has been. You know, it's sort of like, um, you know, you're just there. And uh, but I think once we get the saddles on them and. And they play old Kentucky home, <laughs> and I hope they play old Kentucky home. <laughs> and then, and then we're gonna go to the gate, and once they get to the gate, I just hope the gate works. That's what I'm worried about—that new gate, you know. So uh, we'll see what happens. 
Wanted to ask you about Gamine because she'll obviously be running in the Kentucky Oaks. We've seen her train here at Santa Anita since she shipped back uh, to Southern California. How is she doing in your opinion? Well, she's a filly that just, you know, she's from day one, we know she was brilliant and that's why she cost so much. But, you know, sometimes you, you, you pay that kind of money for them, they really don't pan out. And she panned out. And so that's, I'm so happy for that. But the, um, the thing about her is, you know, she went two turns off a five and a half sprint against Peach, a really good filly at Oaklawn, and, and they ran fast that day and came back. I, I kept her short. I could have stretched her out, but I wanted to come in a little bit fresher. I think, you know, going long uh, in the Oaks, you know, I just felt like now I didn't want to really gut her out before that race. So. Um, I ran her a mile, ran her seven eighths, and she handled them really well. She shipped, she's shipping again. She's a light frame filly, but you know she's different than in a mischief, like authentic. They're light, they're light, you know, they're long legged, they're light bodied. You know, there's not a lot of bulk there, so I, you know, I feel, you know, with the right pace scenario, if they go after her and just attack her early, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, you don't know until the gate comes open, how everybody's thinking, but. Um, you know, horses like that, Millie, you sometimes, I'm, I'm going to rely on her brilliance mm -hmm. to get her that e extra, that extra, uh, you know, 16th of a mile or whatever. And that, that's when the real, you know, and if she can do that, you know, that puts her in the same category as a silver bullet day. She seems like she's got a great mind on her too. She does. She's doing much better. You know, she, I had a problem with her with her mouth and we changed bits last time. It made a big dif difference, and, and uh, Johnny V said he could really had more control of her. And when she won by 18, he was fighting her the whole way. And he said, I'm sorry, Bob, I had to let her run because I was, she was just fighting me. <laughs> and that's why she won by 18. I said, hey, don't worry, about, you know. But, um, but you know what? She does things that are just, and it comes easy for her, like the good horses. And uh, she sort of reminds me of a uh, justify type, you know, that, you know, they just have that brilliance and they, they, they do it, you know, she does crazy things, but uh, so I'm, I'm probably more nervous for the Oaks, you know, because I, I know I'm really looking forward. I, you know, she's a great filly and, you know, you want to see him and she's running against some really tough competition. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. One filly who was so impressive to run the way she did as a two-year-old, Princess Noor. She came back and worked today. What are your thoughts on her? Well, Princess Nora is another one that, you know, costs a lot of money, 1.35. Uh, and, you know, another one that, well, I hope it works out, you know. And, and so far, after watching her run the first time, it's definitely worked out, you know, as long as they stay healthy. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about her. You know, she's, I think she's just a um, super talented filly, came back. Her, her race, I told Victor, you know, like I used to tell you with American Pharaoh, if all goes well, don't win. Save me a little bit because I might I want to run her back in two weeks. And he he saved her all he could, you know. And so uh, she came back and 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 worked really well. A lot of horse. She's classy. She's got a great mind. A beautiful filly. And um, and so I'm excited about her. Yeah, you know that's a, it's a great one. So. It's, you know, it's the time of year now, we're getting these young horses ready, you know, hopefully, you know, getting them ready for the Breeders' Cup. So it's, uh, th this, this, next, this next week is gonna be pretty exciting. Unfortunately, I can't be here to, to watch her run or a horse like Spielberg that's gonna run the fraternity, which I'm, I, I think is a cut out to be a really top horse too. So, but hopefully, I just hope we have some good racing luck.